another perspective uh, that I was able to see was uh, a recent video by Sean Baker, and he discussed Rich Rowe, who's a you know ultra endurance athlete, uh, vegan, and unfortunately, uh, and we definitely wish him well. He's struggling with musculoskeletal issues. He reminds me of Michelle Hearn, who is a runner as well in the low carb community. I'll be seeing her at uh, the Metabolics and Health Symposium uh, that's sponsored by the Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners in August, I think on the 25th. And uh, she struggled physically. She, she, she literally started to deteriorate. And I, when I talked to her during my podcast interview with her, she, she struggled and she suffered. And then not until she added the uh, animals back uh, with this, she start to heal. So this is, so I'm not sure what's going to happen with, uh, Rich Rowe, uh, what he's going to do, but I just wish him well and hope that, um, if, if lack of animals is what was causing his, uh, deterioration, hopefully he'll start to see that. So, so if you were to, um, you know, that statement you made earlier, which was so, it's such a strong statement, plants are trying to kill you, right? Uh, you know, what would you say to a vegan who is uh, doing their best to be healthy? They're really trying to find the ideal diet, which is why I was vegan vegetarian for years. Uh, what would you say to them to help emphasize why plants, what is it about plants that makes them harmful to the human body? Yeah. Well, uh, that's the thing, you know, uh, people go vegan or vegetarian for so many different reasons. And, uh, you know, so I'm not one of those people that, you know, have, have any animosity towards these people because you put Absolutely. a lot of thought and you put a lot of effort into this. And you know, I mean, that's a radical change, you know, going carnivore is a radical change, but anytime you, you step away from the norm, it, it's difficult. You know, you're, you're going to catch uh, grief from people and, and it's, it's going to be just, just harder because it's not, you're not going to have as many available options. So, so people that, that do these things, they put a lot of thought, they generally put a lot of thought into it. And they've weighed a lot of options. They say, this is going to be the best thing for me for whatever reason. And so, you know, I just, I just think that they've just been bitten this lead and they've been given information that's not as accurate as it could be. One of those things is that, like you say, plants are, are the, you know, the, the, the best thing that we can ever eat and is going to reverse all these diseases. I, I think it's the opposite, honestly. I think that, in fact, that so-called chronic diseases that we treat are not actually diseases per se, but toxicities and malnutrition, toxic buildup of a species and appropriate diet and lack of species specific nutrition. So too many plants, not enough animals, as we can see by the fact that, you know, uh, when people stop eating plants, they stop eating, especially sugar and processed, uh, garbage. The, these diseases go away, just like my mom and her, her diabetes just sort of disappeared. Uh, you know, this, we're seeing this in autoimmune issues and, and diabetes and heart disease and, and even cancer. You know, uh, Professor Thomas Seafried has put out a ton of research on this in animal models and, you know, to the point that, that, that people, uh, you know, like cedar cyanide is incorporating like a, a therapeutic ketosis uh, model for treating cancer as well, because it's just, this helps. Um, so what I would, what I would, would point out is that, you know, you know, plants, are living, living organisms, just like everything else. And so they want to stay living organisms. And if you eat them, they die. So they don't have a natural instinct to let you eat them. And you can think about this, uh, quite plainly by going into the woods. And if you run out of food, you can't just eat any random plant, right? You know, mm -hmm. most of them will make you very, very sick or even kill you. You know, I mean, I think most people are, are familiar with the concept of edible and inedible plants. So obviously the concept exists that plants, you know, at least some of them contain poison. So then it's just explaining that, you know, this applies to all plants. And it's not that spinach isn't poisonous. It's just that because of our heritage, we have some defenses to those chemicals, but spinach will kill other animals. You know, mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not like a benign mm -hmm. plant. So if you haven't evolved to eat a specific plant, that plant is bad for you. And because we've been out of that sort of evolutionary game for about 2 million years, you know, we, we've lost some of these abilities. Now, some populations have uh, been exposed to agriculture a little longer than others. And so they have some resistances to some of these foods, but, you know, you compare that to say like uh, European populations and uh, native American populations or native Australian populations the Native Americans, Native Australians, when eating a Western diet are four times as likely 
to develop heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and, and all the rest. So, you know, this is, this is an exposure relationship. And so I just try to explain that and, and just, you know, I just discuss, I mean, this is, you know, basic botany on how these things work. And so when you sort of get that idea that, okay, well, there's some plants that are bad for you, you know, yes, I understand that. And then you can sort of show that, that this is just a, a natural way that plants defend themselves. And then you can sort of go into the, into the evidence of, of the fact that we haven't really eaten these things in a long time and just, um, you know, and so won't have the same defenses against them. That's usually where I start with that. Yeah, that's a good place. Uh, I'll be honest, uh, going back to my conventional training, I uh, didn't learn much about uh, harm that plants can cause us. Uh, it took my nutrition and functional medicine training to even hear terms, you know, like anti-nutrients. I never heard those terms before. Uh, I never knew what a, a, a phytate was, a tannin, a lectin, a oxalate. Those things didn't even exist in my vocabulary. So I think if if you're watching this podcast and or, uh, you know, video, I think it's important that you do yourself a favor and just look up these things and, and learn simple principles like only 3% of the uh, iron uh, that you're trying to get from spinach is actually going to be bioavailable to you. But it's probably in a 35% range if it's from uh, beef or uh, liver. So so I think if you don't know that, you'll think, well, I'm doing fine eating spinach. And the reality is that you may not. So so I think that's important. And, and also listen to your body. You know, there are certain plants I eat uh, and have eaten that I just don't eat anymore because they just make me not, you know, I get a little upset stomach, I get gas and people say, well, that's, you know, that's, you'll get used to that. Well, I never got used to it. I was a vegetarian slash vegan for eight years and tons of things I tried to eat, I, I never got accustomed to. And, and I got tired of feeling gas, et cetera. So I think that's the message I would give as well. 